Um, it's great to be back. Um, it's, I'm excited to be like with friends and family and see some people that I hadn't seen in a while. Um, it just, you know, compete. It's, don't get a chance to really do it on your own. I do it coaching college basketball, but I don't get a chance to actually physically get out there and compete against former really good Division One basketball players. So today is going to be fun. I'm excited. Beating the University of Utah. That's that's a memory that I have with me for for as long as I live. Um, you know, that was the plan. You know, it was you know go there twice, get a chance to play them at home. Um, had an unbelievable crowd, um, somewhere around five to seven thousand. I'm not sure what the exact number was. But we fought, we scrapped, and we beat an NCAA tournament team who was a five seed. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a chance to play with some of those guys today, you know, that I have that memory with. So it was one of my favorite memories, and just being here and the great people, the community, the family. Like this place is always gonna be home for me. I love this place, you know. In my time here, you know, we, my junior year was a really good season for us. We, in league, we finished you know, in the top four, had a chance to finish in second or third, um, but my, I lost my father. He passed like mid-season. And that was a promise that my dad, me and my dad made, you know, when I decided to come here, you know, I have a dream of playing professionally and was hoping that, you know, maybe make it to the NBA someday that didn't happen. But he made sure, you know, that I promised him that someday I was going to make sure I came back and got that paper because he understood how important options were. And at that time I didn't, but because I made that promise to him, um, I'm able to do what I'm doing now, which is coach college basketball and help impact young fellas and mentor young men and try to help them, you know, make sure they understand the importance of having that degree someday. So um, that, that, that's what it was right there. You're kind of here back for two reasons, from being a women's basketball coach and a men's basketball player. Kind of what's it like to come back? Oh, it's, it's great to come back. I've been, uh, I get back to Pocatello quite a bit because I've got uh, two daughters that live here and some grandkids. So, so I make it back here three or four times a year anyway as it is. But, but this is it's just fun to be able to get invited back to the university and, and come up and see people that reminisce with. Yeah, thoughts on kind of start with women's basketball. Thoughts on your time as a coach and any memory that you have? Or? You know, I, I really enjoyed it. So, but uh, uh, when I came here, I was was working in the athletic department, uh, helping as the in raising money. I was the executive director for for the Bengal Foundation, and uh, it's when Ted had some Coach Anderson had some health problems, then, and I was asked to take over the women's program for an interim basis and everything. So, so I had a great year. I was only here one year with them, but some some great players and and uh, it's really fun teaching them. And my experience before had always been coaching men. Although I coached my daughters, I had two daughters. Played college basketball, so so, but uh, but it was great. They were what I remember is, is that they were a lot more coachable than, than the guys that ever coached. They actually followed what you did. So my worst experience, though, was we played Boise State, and my daughter was playing against us while I was coaching. Uh, okay. And so they threw the ball to my center out on the wing, who was pretty quick, but pretty short. And I said, "Take her the hoop," uh, okay. and she did. And my daughter got so mad because <laughs> I'm coaching against her. So. <laughs> Not as much as it used to, but there's still a lot of people. I play, uh, I'm, I'm uh, involved in the Retired NBA Players Association. Okay. And so a lot of those players still remember that. Okay. That was kind of my era, and they remember the upset. And, and uh, Marcus Johnson, I get a chance to, to see him and, and rub it in a little bit about, about our team about that time period. So, and, and when I come back here, it's remembered a lot. So, so when I get back here, and it is surprising, though, is I get a lot of people that have seen that game or recognize that game as they visit with people. How often? Is that fun to still think about even though it's been 40 years? Oh yeah, it was, it was fantastic yeah. to think about it yeah. and what we accomplished and, and still touch base with, with uh, uh, some of the guys on our on our team. In fact, Ed Thompson and I are are joining up and playing in a senior games three on three tournament in St. George later the later on. Oh man, you know, uh, I don't know if I have a secret a secret uh, recipe from transitioning from basketball to like regular life. You know, I, I look back and. And when I finished basketball, I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do, but I ended up uh, playing.
applied for the MBA program here at ISU and got accepted and ultimately ended up uh, doing that. Um, but you know, I mean, my life up to that point, my entire life was a lot, in a large part, based around basketball. I mean, that's what I that's what I did from early early age. I mean, I was the kid sneaking into the gym, shooting around. Um, I was the kid, you know, shoveling snow off the driveway so I could play. And so coming here and and playing basketball was really something that I I had dreamed about my entire life. I wanted I wanted to play college basketball. And so moving on from that, it it took a little bit for me to. Uh, I guess kind of identify with not having basketball being a focus in my life but so many of the things that I learned playing basketball especially here at, at Idaho State I think have, have helped me now in my career I mean everything from you know uh, being able to to uh, get along with the people I work with being able to you know when a challenge arises knowing that uh, I have the ability to to overcome that challenge um, I mean it's it was it was kind of like uh, you know in the in the, in the years I redshirted one year and then played four years so in those five years um, I think in a lot of ways it prepared me for, for the real world and you know what I thought was tough then and I, I would I would love to be able to go back to you know to have that, to, to those opportunities and be able to um, you know be a college basketball player again it was awesome um, well I guess first off I, I was uh, surprised to see such a good turnout uh, well I, I shouldn't be surprised but it seems like there's a really good turnout tonight um, you know for me I'm about 10 years removed from when I when I was playing so the main thing for me is to uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to warm up I'm gonna have to warm up really well and uh, just hope that I don't pull a hamstring well you know I think uh, I think part of it's probably just growing growing up here uh, in the area you know uh, I'm, I'm an Idaho guy uh, born and raised came here to Idaho State you know and, and played basketball and um, the, the other thing too is just spending time here you know being here I did my undergraduate here my my uh, graduate school here so had the opportunity had the opportunity to build a relationship uh, relationships with a lot of a lot of people in the community and it's a great time uh, great time during my life really um, you know after basketball I was here continued going to school uh, my first job out of school was here close so um, spent a decent amount of time almost 10 years total playing basketball going to school um, just kind of being here in the community you know there, there's uh, there's a lot of great memories uh, from Idaho State you know think back to some of the places that we played basketball um, some of the venues um, you know some of the some of the uh, gyms or arenas that we played in um, Kansas sticks out to me playing at Oregon sticks out to me we played at uh, UCLA one year with uh, Kevin Love and Russell Westbrook were there um, so that was that was that was neat but I think probably some of the most special times uh, happened here at Reed Gym and, and uh, over at Holt Arena so my, my first couple years I we played primarily here in Reed Gym and then the second couple years we we moved to Holt Arena but I love playing in Reed Gym it's, there's something about it you know that's the gym where we, we practice pretty much all year round and and so uh, it's fun coming back and being able to play in Reed Gym that's if I were to pick a gym to play in it would be Reed Gym so I, I just like it yeah, I, I think it's neat because I I've been in this area for a long, long time as a coach here, a coach at Southern Utah, coach at Montana. So I know a lot of these guys. And it's excited to see them again. They're, you know, uh, really good people. Um, and I wish some of them had eligibility left. Because I'd, I'd, uh, I'd take them. Mom Morgan sitting down there and just talk to Logan Kinghorn. Those guys were good players. And I remember them well. Yeah, I, I hope they understand. And, and, and I don't want to sound like a broken record. I hope 
hope they understand what good people they are and how successful they are. Let's talk about Amaro. He's coaching Division One basketball in South Alabama. Logan's a pretty successful businessman. Um, and so, I, you know, Akbar's here. I, I want him to see those guys and what they've done with their lives after basketball.